Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Puzzle. Today with Hazmat Cargo, packing puzzle designed 2012 by Karl Hoff. And this copy is also made by him. The task of this puzzle is that you need to place nine of those hexaminos, a shape with six units, or in this case, six squares, somehow here on this grid with a small gap in between and that's it pretty much. Yeah, so sounds pretty simple and um, it keeps you actually pretty much motivated. Yeah, because it sounds so simple, but it's so incredibly difficult, you can't imagine. I know that Chris Ramsey also tried to solve this puzzle some time ago without success and same was on me. But I can also tell you, you will see the solution today and I would like to explain you how I came to the solution by using basically the same weapon, let's say, that was used to create this puzzle, a computer. So, and maybe a little bit more about this puzzle itself. What makes it so special is this puzzle has only one, only one specific solution. Of course, there are mirrored and um, flipped solutions but the configurations of the pieces relative to each other is only possible in one specific way, which makes this puzzle the only examino based puzzles with this property. Karloff has, by the way, also a YouTube channel. I will link you his video where he describes this puzzle just to give you some more details if you would like to understand more. So what's the, what's the problem for me is um, you can basically start with every piece in every position here on this puzzle and um, and in initially it looks always good but after some time you will notice that you are completely wrong and there's also missing this detail in the end that makes this puzzle possible to assemble and it's not possible. What was a bit frustrating for me and why I in the end decided to solve it in a different way is not knowing or not understanding and finding any approach how to logically solve this puzzle. Understanding a detail here that helps me to understand where to start or what pieces to combine, nothing, yeah? And then after like four or five hours of solving, I said, no, this is, for me, this puzzle is impossible to solve. So congratulations, Carl, if this was your target, your intention, you beat me here on this one. And if there is a logical approach, Carl, please let us know in the comments how to approach this puzzle, if there's a way how to understand how to combine the pieces and how to see it. For me, as I said, it was impossible. But how did I find a solution in the end? And I will show you the solution, of course, later. But first, let me explain you a bit how I found it. So everyone who is a bit familiar with puzzling, especially Burr puzzles or interlocking puzzles, knows the software Burr Tools, a very powerful software created by Andreas Röver to calculate and visualize the assembly and disassembly process of Burrs. So basically a puzzle like this or a interlocking puzzle, a complex interlocking puzzle by, like this. And I get a lot of times below my videos a comment, impressive how you disassemble it or reassemble it. And I can tell you on all my previous videos, I never used Burr Tools to solve any of those puzzles. But it's even more impressive how someone could come up with such a complex design. Here, Burr Tools steps in. Tell you if it's solvable, how the solving process looks like, and also how many steps are necessary to solve it. As I said, not easy, but definitely nothing that's impossible. Knowing and understanding this now, you understand also that it's possible to design pieces like those standard burr pieces here to create a burr puzzle like this or create a complex puzzle, a very complex burr puzzle or interlocking puzzle like this one, which would probably be basically impossible to do without having a burr tools or similar software available. Even coming also here to some incredibly complex designs like this one, Cranium, I showed you some weeks ago. But now let's talk a bit more about Hazmat Cargo and, and Burr Tools, how I solved it. So overall, 11 times 11, and we have here a length of this piece, for example, of four steps, let's call it, okay? If we place those pieces, and uh, and what Burr Tools can't display is um, the gaps between the pieces. Therefore, I had to find an alternative possibility. So if I place it like so, we have here then, of course, 11 holes, but only can fit in nine pieces. Yeah, two remain empty because of the gaps. And what I did is I modeled a alternative shape that consumes basically the gaps between the parts. 
So I considered, for example, on this part here, which has four pieces, half a step more in this direction, half a step more in this direction. Means around each piece, you have a half a step more and which closes the gaps between the pieces and then would close the complete area. So this is Bertels and how it basically looks like. And I would like just show you some very basics that you can understand how this program works and what's possible with it, because it's pretty impressive. So we create us a new puzzle and I can now define the shape of the pieces and uh, the shape of the volume where the pieces need to fit inside. Let's do a similar puzzle as the one we have. We choose a seven by seven by one grid. I define first an outer space around here where the frame goes. I, I will use a frame for a better understanding. And then I define an inner space or volume that can be variable in case some of the areas are not filled. Now I will create some shapes or some pieces that will go in the puzzle. So I will create a piece like down here uh, from this type of parts, solid pieces. I will create a shape which goes like here and I create another shape which looks like so. And in addition, we also create a frame for better visualization. Next, I will choose the part, you remember the part here um, that's specifying the volume. I will choose this one as our puzzle space, let's say. Not sure what's the term, never read the instructions. So. Um, and then I will define all the other three or four pieces, including the frame, as the pieces that need to be fit in to this space. And that's it pretty much already. If you solve it, it takes about a second. It found six solutions and six assemblies. We excluded mirrored solutions and so on. Here you can see now the six solutions. Okay, so you can see the pieces are arranged in different configurations on the puzzle. And you can also display the moves, how to assemble the puzzle. So this is a very simple example on how Bird Tools works and what it's capable to do. To make you understand what is possible for you, I just show you the file for Cranium, the puzzle I showed you before. This is the file for Cranium with all of its pieces here the space where they need to fit inside and the solver. And this is already done. It took here 4.8 hours to calculate all these pieces. There's only one solutions and 116 steps to assemble this puzzle. And if I move along here, you can see that this software is now showing us the specific step-by-step -step solution, how to move each single piece to assemble the puzzle or disassemble the puzzle as you like, just based on the shape of the puzzle where the pieces need to fit inside and the shape of the single pieces. If there's no solution, of course, it results in an error, so it needs to be designed in the right way, but you can see here also it considers sub-assemblies to be assembled, and then those sub-assemblies are connected and assembled to the overall skull-shaped cranium puzzle. Very impressive, very cool software, and very handy, and without this software, probably the burr, especially the burr and interlocking puzzles we have or seen today would definitely be not developed that far as they currently are. So these here are basically the first two steps and then the third one to take it out and then I can move the next two pieces. And now we can see that the solution here of the physical with the physical puzzle is exactly the same as the first steps here shown in Bird Tools. We need to push this one up, this one out, and then we can slide those out exactly the same as it was calculated before. Hazmat Cargo, here it is. Okay, so this is the, the board, let's say, the 11 times 11 board, and why so many pieces? Well, I can explain you based on the parts. So one square on the part, and you have six of them of each part, represents here four voxels. So one piece, another piece, another piece, another one, another one, another one. And then for the space that's going in between of the parts, the gap, I added another voxel line here around, and then it result in this shape. So the 11 times 11 grid turns then in a 26 times 26 grid, because 11 times 11 times two, make it 22 times 22. I also added a frame for a better visual visualization, then it's 24 times 24, plus half a piece here and half a piece here on each side, making it 26 times 
26. So here we have our single pieces. All the single pieces, they look slightly different, as I said, because I added this line around. Otherwise, they're exactly the same shape. So, and then I run the calculation, and this is basically the result of the calculation. Um, took 1.4 days, which is quite short in, if you consider that initially it said 317 years to calculate, but after like 12, 13 hours, it went down to a few days. And then in the end, it were only 1.4 days the computer was running and calculating the result of this puzzle. It found one solution, surprise, surprise. So as announced, this puzzle has only one solution, just to confirm this again. And this is how the solution looks like in the end, okay? So this is the frame that goes around for better visual visualization. And then the pieces need to be arranged in this way to solve the puzzle. This was at, at least what Bertus tools told me how the solution looks like. So assuming that we have the correct geometry modeled into Bird tools and calculated it correctly, we now should be able to transfer our solution to the real puzzle. So let's just double check by putting it in piece by piece. First piece goes here, the second piece over here, third piece like here, fourth piece, the fifth piece, and this one is a very tricky one because I would have personally never expected that this PC would be placed in a corner, wasting the area here. I always place this somewhere in the center. Piece number six goes here. Number seven goes here. Number eight. And number nine. Puzzle solved. Not solved by myself, but at least found a way to somehow solve it at all. As I told you, I found no other approach. To me, it appeared like you need to be somehow lucky to arrange the pieces in the right way, start off in the right way, and then somehow get them combined in the right way by luck. I didn't found a way to combine them. Carl, again, if there is a logical way how to solve this puzzle, some detail I didn't notice. Let me know in the comments. Regarding the difficulty, I think it's clear. This puzzle is definitely a level five out of a maximum of five on my personal difficulty rating scale. Actually, it's even close to level giraffe, but as you know, nothing is as hard as the giraffe. Therefore, let's let's place it one level below, somewhere in between five and giraffe, if you know what I'm talking about. Thank you also, Carl, for building this puzzle, sending it over and letting me try it. Very interesting puzzle, definitely, but just too difficult. But I'm pretty sure this was intended. <laughs> yeah, and that's it about today. If you like what you have seen in this episode, hit the like button, of course, comment below, if you have any questions, Carl, I'm sure is also up for responding to your questions about this puzzle. That's it for today. And until next time, keep on puzzling.